Despite what you may have seen on TV, lawsuits are never fun. They take a lot of time and money, but there are ways you can speed things up, like settling out of court. Or if you want to follow the example of one small Alabama town, you can speed up the legal proceedings by staging an elaborate heist. Idea for a fun history story, the night that Bay Manette stole the county seat from Daphne, literally. That question, well, that's not really a question, but that, that idea was submitted to Ask Alabama by Timothy Williamson. A brief disclaimer, this story's been told by many different people on different sides of the issue, which means there are different versions of what exactly happened, but this, as far as I can tell, is what went down. Back in the 1890s, a man named J.D. Hand started up a timber yard in the middle of Baldwin County and over the years acquired a few thousand acres of land he planned to develop into a town. That town would be Bay Minette, Alabama. But key to J.D. Hand's plan working was making Bay Minette the county seat of Baldwin. Now, if you don't know what a county seat is, it's basically the capital of the county. It's where the county commissioners meet and where the sheriff's office is and where the county jail and courthouse are. And in those days, when travel could take a while, being the county seat meant a lot of lawyers and politicians and upper crusty folks would be visiting your town frequently, if not just outright moving there. Now, in the 1890s, while J.D. Hand was setting up Bay Minette, the seat of Baldwin County was Daphne, Alabama. It was chosen after the Civil War because it was along the waterway, which made travel a little easier from some places in the county, and because the old county seat, Blakely, had basically been Civil Warred out of existence. However, with the rise of train travel across the state, getting to more landlocked portions of the county became easier, and J.D. Hand used this to convince state lawmakers and citizens of the county to move the county seat to Bay Minette, which was more centrally located. In the year 1900, the state legislature approved this move and the folks of Bay Minette got to work building a courthouse. In 1901, when the county courthouse was finished, the people of Bay Minette reached out to Daphne to have the county court records shifted over to the new courthouse. And the people of Daphne said no. Daphne didn't want to lose its position as the county seat and filed for a permanent injunction to block the move. Now, J.D. Hand could have just been patient and waited for the matter to be resolved in the courts, but the wheels of justice turned slow and he wanted the county seat now. So he came up with another plan. If Daphne wasn't willing to give us the court records, let's just go steal them. I like where that dude's head was at. In October of 1901, J.D. Hand got a couple dozen guys together from Bay Minette with guns and tools for breaking into the records room and made an overnight ride to Daphne. They arrived at night, camped outside of the city, and in the early morning hours made their move. The Bay Minette group went to the sheriff's office slash courthouse slash jail, it was all one building, with a teenager they had apprehended. This kid was wanted for breaking into houses. They knocked on the sheriff's door, and when he answered, they brought the teenager in, along with all the guys that had come from Bay Minette. The sheriff was like, thanks for the arrest, but you guys gotta get out of here. And the men of Bay Minette said something to the effect of, afraid not, dude, we're not leaving without the records. Now, the sheriff, being one guy facing down a small army, was understandably flummoxed. He threatened them with arrest, but they still wouldn't leave. So he managed to just lock them up in jail. What the sheriff didn't do was take away their tools. So after the men were put behind bars, they just got to work deconstructing the jail. Once they were out, they spent the next few hours packing up the courthouse onto wagons and eventually headed home. This heist really happened. They even painted a mural about it inside the Bay Minette post office. Now with all the records gone and no real other options, the county judge just moved to Bay Minette and set up shop there. But the people of Daphne weren't going to just take this lying down, and they continued to try to get the courthouse returned. But after a year and a half in court, judges eventually ruled that the theft of the courthouse documents was legal, because when it happened, a judge had yet to rule on the permanent injunction. So the men of Bay Minette were legally in the right when they stole the court, and the legal fight over the location of the county seat was officially settled. Now, as I've said, there are competing versions of this story. Some folks in Daphne will claim that the Bay Minette crew arrived loaded for war because they were so scared of the people of Daphne and that they tricked the sheriff out of the courthouse with a fake murder. Some folks in Bay Minette say it really wasn't that dramatic. They claim the judge and the sheriff were in on it from the start and they just waltzed in and grabbed the records. Heck, if you ask different people what J.D. Hand's real name is, some will tell you James D. Hand and other people will tell you John D. Hand. But the version I told you came from a historian who based his account on court records, which is why I'm inclined to believe it. Anyway, with the matter settled and the city established, J.D. Hand sold off his interest in his new town, making a tidy profit and headed off for the next stage of his life, which I presume involves stealing the Declaration of Independence because there was a secret treasure map on the back. Now, I'm Jonathan Sobolewski for Reckon. Hey everybody, if you like this video, you can help us out by leaving a like and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a video. And if you've got questions about Alabama you want answered, you can leave your questions at al.com ask. Thanks for watching.